Welcome to Everyone's a Millionaire podcast. What was your biggest financial mistake or setback, and how did you recover from it? So you kind of already mentioned that. Well, you know, but maybe well, that so wasn't the answer to that question, though. It, it wasn't. In 2009, and I'll, I'll share the brief version of the story with you, but in 2009, I was living in a, in a condo in Brickell, which is a nice area in Miami. I went down to the mailbox. I was living on the ninth floor, grabbed a bunch of mail, got back up to my apartment, threw it on the on the kitchen counter. And you ever you ever like have one of those defining moments, like something in your gut tells you like something's off? Well, there was a big envelope that was like protruding amongst the others. I grabbed it and I saw certified mail. It's a green sticker. And then I looked at who it was from. It said Internal Revenue Service. Mm -hmm. Well, brother, I opened it up and I realized that I had about $126,000 in back taxes penalties and fines because my 2006, seven and eight taxes were never filed. Ooh. Well, I mentioned to you, I mentioned to you how I didn't come from a family of entrepreneurs. And when I got started in real estate, like I just dove in. I'm the type of dude that like I fire and then I like aim. And yeah. many times that serves me, but in this case it didn't. I hired a bookkeeper, abdicated the responsibility of bookkeeping and taxes, thinking he was doing that. And I wasn't like, let me just do deals. Like, that's what I want to do. And man, over the course of three years, it was a painful lesson, but an extremely valuable one. Not only did I pay off, I was making too much money leading up into 2009. So I didn't qualify for what's called an offering compromise. And so over a three-year period, not only did I pay off the IRS, all the money I owed them, but I paid off roughly $38,000, $39,000 worth of credit card debt as well. And it was such a painful but valuable experience and learning lesson, one that I share openly now because I don't want people to fall into that trap of abdicating important responsibilities like bookkeeping and your taxes. I mean, it sounds basic and obvious, but I was like out of sight, out of mind. Like somebody else is handling that. Let me focus on what I'm good at. And I think there's some value in that, but you, you got to trust but verify. You can't just abdicate. 100%. So that was a setback. How'd you recover from it? Just slowly well, just plugging away at it or just being disciplined? I, well, I hired I hired a coach. I hired a coach. I had to get my mind right. I was in victim mentality for way too long when that happened. I remember driving out in late 2009 to go meet with a bankruptcy attorney. And I remember getting emotional on the way to that, uh, to that meeting. And that bankruptcy attorney gave me one of the biggest gifts I've ever been given is something felt wrong in my gut. Like I, I felt like I was taking the easy way out. Um, and at the end of the meeting, I told him, I said, I don't think I'm going to move forward with this. And he said, you have no choice. How are you going to pay this back? And I'm the type of guy, man, when you challenge me, like, like I come out swinging. Well, I left the meeting. I didn't file. And I committed at that day. I decided back to one of my, you know, one of the things I shared earlier, I decided not only am I going to pay this off, I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to grow from it. And, uh, and yeah, man, that's exactly what I did. I hired a coach and then I put my head down and I, I did the hard work. Man, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah.